Hey everyone, Steph here from Barbell Sanctuary, and in today's video, I'm going to show you my maintenance tips for my Iron Master uh, dumbbells. I've had these for about three years now. Uh, I'm the third owner of these, so I'm just going to show you the preventative maintenance that I do on them to keep them looking fresh every year and make sure that they last a very, very, very long time. All right, let's get into it. As a bonus tip for the video, I'm also going to show you how I do the white lettering for these. It's very hard to get a paint marker inside the letters because they're so small, but I like the black on white, so I actually figured it out one year. So I'll show you that at the end. We're gonna start with the handles. So because I have the expanded set, I'm gonna have eight of the spins, spin locks, the longer ones as well. So I'm gonna do all of them. And uh, as I'm gonna show you, where rust tends to accumulate in these is right in here for some reason and on the sides. I'm assuming it's because you got your sweaty hands in here all the time, so you end up getting some grime there. So what I'll end up using for that is just a little metal brush here, and I'll scrape off as much as the rust as possible. Then I'll wipe it down just with a microfiber, make sure all the gunk is out. And then I'm just going to apply some 3-in-1 oil all over the handle. The reason I use 3-in-1 really is just because if you look online, 90% of the people say to use 3-in-1 for your barbell for maintenance. So same thing, and I just I put it on the brush, and I'll get it everywhere, the knurling on the sides, the inside. It'll help, help prevent the rust, and if there is little rust spots, you can just kind of keep scraping, keep putting it on, and then you wipe it off. Uh, I don't wipe it completely dry, I'll leave that little thin layer, and I'll actually do that more than once a year. So that's pretty much it for the handles. Okay, now moving on to the plates. I have quite a few of these, as you can tell, you do end up getting some wear and tear just throughout the year because these uh, they, they clang together, just throwing them on the on the ground. I mean, these are tough, tough uh, dumbbells. If you if you own them, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm not afraid to throw these around. The paint chips, it's normal, whatever. And you know what? Mine don't even have any rust on them yet, probably because of the paint that I use to paint them. But I keep it up every year just to freshen them up, like I said, make them look brand new. And um, it's just like a car. If you keep the maintenance up, it'll last you a lot longer and it'll take you a lot less time. So what I do, I just use uh, automotive sandpaper, like a higher grit, like a 600, an 800, or a 1000, something like that. And I'll just lightly sand all the little spots on the plate that, um, that the paint is chipped off of. You don't see the rust there, but if there is any, you just make sure you take it out. The other thing you can use is uh, steel wool. I think this is like a quadruple zero steel wool. It's very fine. You don't want to use uh, too heavy of a sandpaper because it'll make uh, some, uh, some grit, grid lines or grit lines as you're sanding it. So you just sand it up with that. And then when you're done sanding, microfiber cloth. Again, uh, you could clean with alcohol or whatever. I don't bother. I just wipe it off with the microfiber that'll absorb any of the dust that I sand it off. Then I grab my favorite Dollarama brush that I got from the dollar store, or even a foam tip brush could work very well. And I paint with uh, a rust paint. It could be Rust-Oleum. Uh, I got this Armor Coat one. I'm in Canada uh, from Canadian Tire here. Why? Because it was cheaper. It's black, flat matte, flat black mate, flat black paint with a, a rust prevention so there's chemicals in here that'll help it if there's any rust there it'll inhibit the rust it probably won't stop it completely even though it does kind of say that but it will definitely slow down the process and protect it eh, and protect it even further and what i like is that you know this kind of seeps into the metal so even if it chips after i find that since i started using this i haven't seen any rust on any of my plates um, since even when they chip to bare metal, I feel like some of the chemicals do get absorbed into the into the metal. So why do I brush it on instead of spray paint? Well, I use this quite a bit and spray cans, yes, they apply nicer, but uh, it's a lot more expensive. And a small one liter can like this will last you quite a long time. So I'm not gonna paint every plate today because it could take a very long time. And I'll typically do one side and I'll catch the edges and then I'll flip them around and I'll do the back. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll use half the plates and I'll probably do half the other plates next weekend because once they dry, then I wanna get into the white lettering 
which, uh, yeah, I'll show you guys how to do that now. So for the white lettering, what you're gonna need is a white paint marker. You can do a different color if you want. I like the black and white. And the ones that I like are the oil ones that have the little felt tip that goes in and out and it, it kind of collects the paint from inside. But it also has the strong, uh, it's a harder felt tip than like a Sharpie would have. And what's nice about it is that because this they're typically too big to go into the cracks of the Iron Master lettering, I'll use an X-Acto knife and I'll actually sharpen the tip of one of my pens just to do the lettering of the Iron Master. I find this adds a really crisp look. I've had lots of comments every time I review or do a video on my Iron Masters. People ask me how I do the lettering. That's how. You can pick these up at Walmart in the craft section. I got this one in an automotive parts store. They use them to label tires and stuff, I think. Anyway, so white paint marker, sharpen the tip with a, uh, with a razor blade and then you can go and just add that nice little fine detail um, to your weights and then they're a lot more visible. And you can use these for the rest of your weight plates as well. Okay guys, so another thing uh, that you can do uh, seeing as how uh, when I was filming this video, I actually ran out of paint in my paint marker So I had to find a different way. I had some whiteout kicking around. What I did is I just painted the whole uh, Area white and then I took this foam brush and then I was able to brush over it. It worked pretty good Now the only thing if you're gonna do this when you use your foam brush Don't put a lot of paint. I found that the less paint I put the easier it was to do it without kind of like hiding the letters. But then a trick for both techniques that I always use, once you're done, if you go over with the white lettering a little bit, is to just use a black Sharpie once it's uh, once it's dry and you can go around and kind of correct your, your over painting. It does come out a little bit of a different uh, black, but you really can't notice it, especially once your weights get a little dirty or once you use them and it dries out. Um, it pretty much impossible to tell. So that's how I do my white lettering. So this is the result from this to this. So guys, let me know in the comments what, which one you prefer, obviously. Um, and if you plan on retouching your Iron Masters like this. Now, these are Iron Masters. If you have power blocks, all these techniques can work to retouch any weight. And this is basically the same technique that I use to do all my Olympic weights as well. Uh, hex dumbbells if I buy them. This is how I refinish everything. Just remove the rust, coat of rust paint, and color the letters white. And anything that's bare steel, I use 3-in-1 oil. If you have a garage gym, a home gym, you enjoy doing uh, DIY projects, make sure you subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss out when I release another video like this. And thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next time.